Going into their Week 4 matchup with the Commanders, the Eagles scouting report on Sam Howell likely had a section highlighting Howell's running and scrambling ability. As Philly fans found out on Sunday, Howell is a slippery player. He currently stands second in EPA and scrambles by a quarterback, which includes ranking sixth in missed and broken tackles per scramble attempt, eighth in yards after contact per attempt, and ninth in yards scrambling per game. This isn't something unexpected as well. Sam has been doing this since college, rushing for over 800 yards his last season at North Carolina. He's a elusive and runs with toughness, not afraid to lower his shoulder. Unfortunately for the Eagles, they did not do a great job of containing Howell despite coming out with the victory. Howell rushed for 40 yards, all on six scrambles, and he made a number of other plays with his legs to hurt the Birds' defense. The majority of these plays came in crucial moments of the game as well, where Sam converted four, third or fourth downs in the fourth quarter, in large part due to his scrambling prowess. The biggest issue for the Eagles was their pass rush integrity. While many times, sacks and quarterback hits do come by way of quick, one-on-one -on -one victories, consistent pressure generally comes from a pass rush unit working as a team, where maintaining pass lane integrity and depth can force the quarterback into a spot where another pass rusher is waiting. When using a standard four-man pass rush, each defender has a lane they are trying to maintain. Think about it like they're trying to keep the quarterback in a box. The edge defenders are aiming for the top corners of the box to their side, while the interior rushers are aiming for the bottom corners of the box. The Eagles did not do a good job of this on several key plays against the commanders. Take this play for example. The game is tied 24 to 24. There's 5 minutes, 46 seconds left in the 4th quarter, and it's 3rd and 7, so the Eagles pass rushers are looking to play the pass aggressively. On the left, Reddick gets too deep, rushing past the quarterback and getting washed all the way to the opposite corner of the box. Jalen Carter gets too deep and wide as well, ending up in Sweat's corner of the box, which also prevents Sweat from being able to stop and come back underneath once he gets to the depth of the QB. Fletch tries to slant inside, but when the guard pushes him too far inside, he does a good job retracing and working back to his proper rush lane. But with three of the four pass rushers way too deep and occupying the same corner of the box, Howell has all the room in the world to run and there's too much space for Flesh to cover alone. It's even more unfortunate because good coverage was wasted due to poor rush integrity. This could have been a coverage sack even if nobody won on their initial pass rush. Again, that was a huge moment in the game. It was a backed up offense in third and seven with time running out in a tie game. The defense needed to get off the field there. Luckily for the Eagles, Reddick's sack two plays later led to a stall drive for Washington. Washington. This sack was also the result of good lane integrity. It is a five-man pressure, so the rush lanes are a little different, but you can see that the Eagles keeping lane integrity on the interior doesn't give Powell a place to step up as Reddick and Sweat are turning the corner. That's a group working as a unit. Earlier in the fourth quarter, Howell again converted a third down, using his legs to extend the play and throw. This time, BG ends up getting too much depth on his pass rush, opening up a seam for the quarterback to escape. I understand his football, and he's somewhat close to making a play, but selling out like this leaves the defense vulnerable. The coverage was good on the back end, and Hal has to hold on to the ball. If BG maintained good rush depth, he had a good chance to come back underneath the block for a sack. This was also good speed by Jordan Davis on their pursuit. I'm not so sure that he doesn't get to Hal if Bradbury decided to stay in coverage, but take this sack earlier in the game by Sweat as a comparison to the last play. Jalen Carter actually doesn't do a good job maintaining his rush lane, but Sweat did a good job not getting too deep and washed out of the play. Once he realized he wasn't going to win the edge, he stopped getting depth and retraced. While this isn't a sack that you throw on the highlight tape, because Sweat did a good job with his rush depth, the tackle is in the way and Sam trips over him. If Sweat had a pass rush like BG on the play before, the tackle wouldn't have been there to trip over. Sweat also had eight other pressures on the day, so while you might say it's a cheap sack, I'll say that Sweat earned this one. On a fourth and two, with 41 seconds left, we see a similar issue, though this was more on Reddick losing the rep. Still, it shows how sacks often come as a result of working as a team. Jalen Carter wins his one-on-one -on -one fairly quickly and forces Howell to scramble right into where Reddick would have been if he wasn't on the ground. Now this play would have been a first down regardless due to defensive holding on one side and Slay playing lackadaisical on the backside after reading the quick drop and pump fake by Howell. But this is still a good example of why rushing as a unit is important. With this being fourth and two, I understand Reddick's mindset that the offense is probably going with a quick pass, which often results in pass blockers using a quick set. Those create short edges, which Reddick can quickly win around. But when the tackle takes a vertical set and you factor in Sam's escapability, maybe converting to a bull rush to collapse
snaps the pocket would have been a better move. I know it's easy for me to sit here rewinding plays saying a guy should have done this, but it's something to think about when they encounter future situations like this. When using stunts and line movement, the Eagles will likely spend some time this week in practice working on their lane integrity. When teams stunt, the responsibilities switch, but they still need to maintain their pass rush lanes. On this stunt, Sweat and Carter are replacing roles. Thinking back to the box, Sweat should now be rushing to the bottom right corner of the box, while Carter should be looking to push towards the back corner. Carter doesn't keep contained, and Sweat gets washed down too far. It's football though, and sometimes this stuff happens. Fletch does a good job recognizing that Sweat has been pushed too far inside, overlapping his rush lane. So he works to replace where Sweat was, and as a result, he ends up pressuring Hal into a throwaway. A heads up play by Fletch causes the Eagles to actually reconfigure into good pass rush lanes. Football isn't a static game with lines on a chalkboard. There are organic, evolving plays that involves reacting to situations. Sometimes initial pass rush integrity isn't able to be maintained, but having players with good football IQ can make you right. The captain of this unit made them right on this play. On another stunt, Reddick ends up getting washed too far inside, though I'll give him the benefit of the doubt since he tripped over an offensive lineman. Flesh did loop around on this stunt a little too wide though. Ideally, he'd like to come tighter off the shoulder of the offensive tackle. This combination led to a wide alley for Howell to escape through. BG also had a stunt earlier in the game where he was supposed to hold the bottom left corner of the box, but instead was washed up to the top right. This was influenced in large part by the tight end chipping him, but he should be aware that the tight end might chip him from that alignment. He could take a starting alignment a little tighter, or just be cognizant that the chip might be coming. Either way, it opens up a running lane for Howell. While it only resulted in a three-yard rush, there was good coverage again. This isn't just a three-yard rush. This was an opportunity to create a negative play for the offense due to good coverage on the back end. Howell is a slippery quarterback who was hard to bring down. I'm not sure if there was an emphasis on it in practice, but the player should have been more aware that he is a guy that will make you miss. Fletch should have had a sack after a filthy hump move he put on the guard, but he came in a little too out of control. Luckily, Morrow was there to clean it up. But later in the fourth quarter, the Eagles missed a huge play due to a similar issue. I'm not sure what the play call is here, and this isn't necessarily about pass rush integrity, but Edmund should understand leverage and where his help defenders are, even if this isn't a design blitz. He needs to keep Howell on his inside shoulder. Even if he missed him while maintaining outside leverage, it would have allowed the pursuing defenders to get the sack. Though the play goes down as only a two-yard gain, again, it's really a missed opportunity for the Eagles to get the commanders into second and 18. Two plays later, the pass rush played with good lane integrity, but this time Jalen Carter lets Howell slip through his arms. It ended up with a penalty resulting in a first down. I don't think this is a late hit on Edmonds, but I'm not one to bitch about penalties. You control what you can't control, and on two of the previous three plays, the Eagles had Hal dead to rights for a sack and let him go. If they did their job, then there wasn't even an opportunity for this penalty to exist. Instead, the commanders went down the field to tie the game up. Overall, the Eagles' inability to contain Hal from scrambling and extending plays came down to failures in their pass rush discipline. There were a lot of plays where they did play with good discipline, but in crucial moments in the game, that discipline evaded them. Hal is a young quarterback that will hold the ball for too long and run himself into sacks. While we love to see our star players win on their initial pass rush, maybe a bigger emphasis on keeping Howell from escaping should have been made throughout the week. I imagine the Eagles will spend some time working on this throughout the week in practice, and it will be something to watch going forward, as coming up soon, the Eagles will have some quarterbacks that are adept at extending plays.